This video is a very short introduction into the WS2 API Manager and its uh, capabilities. So before diving in, I'd like to introduce the problem that it tries to solve uh, very quickly. So if you're someone who had worked in the IT industry uh, dealing with enterprise uh, grade software, I'm sure you are by now familiar with uh, services and microservices and all of the ecosystem that surrounds it. So as you all know, services and microservices are at the very heart or at the very core of our business offerings, of our solutions. So what is happening now in the modern day is that, is that uh, these services and microservices are being consumed by a very wide range of people and devices. So we now use mobile devices for a lot of things such as for doing shopping, for making doctor appointments, for doing banking and we now know there are lots of cars that do various kinds of internet uh, communications while the drive is happening. Lots of devices like smart watches and smart homes connecting to various services on the internet. So similarly lots of consumers are now consuming various kinds of services offered by enterprises so when these when the amount of consumers increases we have lots of new avenues to think about such as how we are going to secure our services how we are going to control access to them likewise so this is where API management comes into the picture so our services and microservices are designed and are perfect for doing executing the business functionality but the api management layer takes care of all the exposure related complexities such as security rate limiting monitoring etc so now to go into the capabilities of the ws2 api manager the api manager is primarily designed to solve this particular problem and it has a component starting off called the api publisher which is the developer portal of api developers so this is where api developers would come in and register their interfaces that would be used for proxying their microservices or the services so this is where they would develop or design their apis using the uis or by importing existing open api specification documents um, and they would design all the policies on this component and they would be getting various kinds of controls uh, for doing mock implementations of the APIs if the target serv services are not ready. Tra it also has some uh, graphics for giving you insights about how the APIs are being consumed. It enables you to do lifecycle management of the APIs and a wide range of such functionalities that are primarily focused for API developers and API product managers. Then comes the discovery part of these services, which is called the app developer portal. It gives you an app store or like a Google, Google Play Store like experience for consuming the APIs that have been published by the API product managers. So it gives you capabilities of searching and discovering your APIs, gives you capabilities of going reading their documentation and understanding how the APIs work, uh, gives you capabilities of testing out the APIs and also trying out the various kinds of SDKs that are available so that you can quickly try out the APIs uh, that are out there. So in very short, the API store or the developer portal is uh, designed for uh, app developers to help them to increase the efficiency of consuming these services. So the publisher and the developer portal combined complete the design time aspects of your API ecosystem. And next we get on into the runtime, which consists of the API gateway and the API uh, key manager. So the API gateway, which also now comes in the flavor of an API micro gateway, is a primary component that intercepts all the requests that are going in into your services and microservices. It intercepts all those requests and applies various forms of policies such as security, such as rate remitting and it also acts as the entry point of feeding insights into the analytics engine for gaining various kinds of business insights. Uh, so that's about the API gateway. It also comes in the flavor of uh, API micro gateways which can be developed or deployed in microservice architectures. And the key manager component is also called an STS, a security token service, which issues secure tokens for consuming devices, applications. So this is the component that assists the gateway to perform various kinds of security operations, such as validation of tokens, issuing of tokens, likewise. And then we have a component called the traffic manager, which is primarily 
uh, focused on doing rate limiting activities. So you may have policies that require you to rate limit various kinds of users, various kinds of applications, various kinds of IP addresses, various types of devices, etc. So the traffic manager component is the component that applies all of these different or advanced rate limiting policies on your API gateway. And finally, we have the API analytics component, which is a component responsible for monitoring your system in terms of business insights. This is a component that gives you historical analysis into what has been going on over the past couple of weeks, months and years. And it is also the component that gives you insight that is about what happens right now in the system. It is capable of detecting fraud and uh, firing alerts based on various kinds of abnormalities. So this is the entire spectrum of the API manager, very short. So feel free to use uh, the product and give us feedback. It's free and open source for use. You can download it from our website. It comes with an Apache 2 license, so you can use it uh, very freely, all the capabilities of the product with no restriction. Thank you.